Hey there, everybody, and welcome. This is Tavo DRC, Dr. T. We're over here at the DFW Leader Ministry Online Fellowship, and we're getting ready to do some things that are going to make us contribute to our wellness, contribute to pre-thinking life ahead. We don't want to just sit around, melt into the woodwork, meld into the common status quo. We want to get out there. But the thing that really crossed my mind this morning is this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. How can we rejoice and be glad in it no matter what? That's our topic today, the hot topic. How can we rejoice in the Lord? When I look at Psalm 118, let's say that's our Teammate U Apostolic Ministry, Teammate U University, uh, where we have a college starting, you know, supposedly. And the goal of it is to say that life is not full of easiness, but it's not, should not be full of legalism. And so Psalm 118 is our criteria for the minister, those who have a call in their life to lead for the Lord. If you read Psalm 118, you'll notice that there are different passages, different steps that you go through in your life if you're really in it for the long haul. And I'm in it for the long haul. So you're in it for the long haul, so that means you're going to have a process. And you're going to make progress sometimes. And sometimes it's not like you're going to make any progress. You can't tell what's going on. So all those things, if you read Psalm 118, it's so cool. It starts off with honoring the Lord and, you know, the mercy of the Lord endures forever. Let the priesthood say, let the mercy of the Lord endures forever. Let the, all these, you know, all that about the mercy and love of the Lord. That's our foundation that he's good. Then it goes into times when you feel like you're alone. And in Psalm 100, Psalm 118, verse 7, it says, Lord, you said you'd provide people that will help me. That's the paraphrase. There are times when you have nobody. It looks like there's nobody there to be your friend, to be with you, to, you know, have joy with or fun or to help you on your team in life, your ministry. So it says God will provide and send those people when you need them, when he says you need them, and they will be there for you, and you can be there for them. You can be there for them. So I like Psalm 118 for myself because I realize so many things. Sometimes you feel totally alone without help. Sometimes you feel everything's fine. And one of the verses, if you get down in there in Psalm 118, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. These are the days. Even these are the days that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I'm so glad Jesus is in my heart, the Holy Spirit, because I've invited Jesus in to my heart, accepted him, made him Lord and Savior. And that's the secret source. You know, some people talk about the secret sauce. This is the secret source. That little deposit, it gives you a free deposit of the of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, self-control, which we all can use more of. But I enjoy the fact that he's with me. He's very portable. <laughs> no matter if you're riding or jogging, if you're sitting or standing or talking, there he is when you need him. But at times you really need to have real knowledge of him, not just about him, not somebody else's experience, not somebody else's story, the Bible. You got to have a relationship with the Lord. That's the secret to all of this. Then know how to grow and learn to lean on to let God lead you. Now, when I talk about the joy of the Lord, that's one of the things that is so dear to me. My mom had it. My parents had it. I just grew up with thinking that joy is not impossible. I have joy. The joy of the Lord, the Bible teaches us, is our strength. When we have no joy, when somehow we find ourselves miserable or just like a balloon, the joy of the Lord is like your inner balloon, <laughs> your emotional balloon, your soul, mind, will, and, you know, that type of thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength emotionally 
and it helps you just with attitude and feeling po things are possible. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. So there it is inside from the Holy Spirit. And if you do something like you're get bent out of shape, you know, not bent out of shape, but bent out of sorts, you're angry at somebody, somebody really gets you mad, you feel really disappointed, you're watching too much nightly news, online news, you get all like, oh my gosh. That's because you've crossed your tipping point. See, you got to know how to do it in these days. You got to know how to keep that joy. It's a skill. It is a real skill because everything, people, watching other people, all the news, all this stuff, and the hubbub and scuttlebutt of life and ministry is enough to t pop that balloon and make it go fizz. You know, all the air come out and lose your joy. So many, it takes skill. If you're watching news, you got to be, you know, you can't be clueless. You've got to be aware so you can pray, so you can know what's going on. But it's knowing that there is a tipping point where you can be watching it, observing, taking it in. All of a sudden you feel that old, ugh. You're starting to cross your tipping point where everything is fine. You're a fine until all of a sudden you so much that you're starting to see, oh my gosh, it's so depressing. It's a burden. It's a fear. And you lose that joy. You lose that joy. And therefore, you have to figure out, how do I get it back? Many people don't know you can get it back. And I'm talking to the Christian. Many people don't. You can protect your joy. That you can get it back. And that if other people say you're a failure, or if life tries to make you the devil himself or your own voice, the crowd of voices... <laughs> You're a failure. You're a failure. You have to be smarter. You have to know not to go there. You have to not receive it and only live with the approval of God himself as your audience of one. That's who you're going to please. That's who I live. All right. You can look around and have FOMO. Fear of missing out, keeping up with the Joneses. That's the old phrase for it. All right, you can look around, competing, comparing. That'll take your joy right there. The Bible says, He or she who compares themselves with another is not wise. Happily, in my 20s, decades ago, the Lord gave me, I was a mom at, with home with the children and, you know, things up and down your, all the neighborhood. You're thinking of the Joneses and, you know, what's going to be the best thing for your baby to wear. And there's a certain style and then your house and your car and your, that pressure, that old pressure. So happily, thank God I knew the Lord. Thank God I knew Jesus back then. He got my attention. And he said, back in my 20s, he or she who compares themselves with another is not wise. And I realized, that's right. I want to be wise. I don't want to be a foolish person. And the, princi the principle is, you can respect people, but you don't have to be moved by their, you know, keep your esteem in the Lord. Your esteem is not your house, your car, what you live in, what you don't have or your money in the bank, it's the Lord. And that is so liberating. So when I had friends that were, you know, other couples and married and children, and you get into that mom thing too easily, it was just like, thank the Lord I learned. So I just didn't do that. I don't go there. That's a lot of reason. I'm careful also what I watch on TV or watch on news. I watch on because that can penetrate, get in your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. The, um, the soul realm is where your tipping point is. If you close your eyes, you can't see my eyes. But if I close my eyes, you close your eyes. That's the part that is your mind, will, and emotions, your spirit. And that is your mortal soul, mind, will, and emotions. And that one day when you die, lie down and die, that part of you, not the body, not your earth suit, but your body will go, the, the soul will go to either heaven or the other place. 
that's why it's so important that you make your choice now that you're going to the right place. It's really important, especially in these days, especially in these days when there's fatigue and there's disease and there's H on earth in a lot of places. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, inside, from the inside to the outside, the best you can be prepared and ready and then keeping your joy. Keep that joy tank full. One of the, you know, I've, I've learned just because I didn't want to get depressed. I used to get depressed is how this started back in my teens and 20s. I used to get up and down and there were even you know you go to different corporations you go to different things they give you a Marsburg or Christian ministries they give you a personality test so some of them can be like dooming you forever I'm not a caloric but that was one that I thought man those people are doomed forever they're always gonna be hot-headed <laughs> I'm not but mine was more like melancholy you know, the creative melancholy, deep thinker. And I used to be down and up and down and up, but I'm not for decades <laughs> because of God. Thank the Lord for the Lord. So if things are because of just experience in doing this, choosing to do it, he's made me strong in him by grace. And I know now to watch myself if my joy is missing, I look back and think, what did I do to let that happen? Did I get angry? Did I not forgive? Did I get sorry for myself? Did I take in too much media, get oppressed? So you can have knowledge, which is fine. Then you can feel that tipping point. All right, it's getting ready to go to oppression. Oh, I feel oppressed. I feel oppressed. Oh my gosh, it's so horrible. Then you go down to depression. You don't want to go there. Learn and train your children. Train your friends not to let their tipping point go down. One reason for this, prevent depression and suicide. So we just catch it. It's the tipping point. Knowing your Bible helps and that there is a joy of the Lord that is your strength. That is a wonderful thing. Psalm 118, a lot of promises in there. One of them is, one of the main ones that I think of. Psalm 118 verses 9, excuse me, 8 and 9. And I think these are the middle verses out of all the Old Testament and the New Testament. These are the middle centric verses, which is amazing. I heard that years ago, I, you know. Psalm 118 says, do not put your confidence in man in a human. Don't put your confidence in anybody. Put it in the Lord. All right. The second one is, got a little accompaniment over there. Do not put your confidence in princes. Don't put your confidence, your hope in princes. Those are leaders and elders as one of their followers. Instead, only put your hope in the Lord. Hold on just a second. Let me crank these windows up so that we can hear and finish this up. But God is good. I think it's so interesting. One time I had one that was going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Usually it's pretty quiet. Anyway, so the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now here's one more tip. There are natural things too that affect your joy. They can affect your joy. If you're inside one place too long and too close, you know, you can get that down feeling. So it helps to move, it helps to go out, it helps to do things that are other-centric, helping people, going out to work out, going out to recreate. That is also part of being nat naturally guarding your joy. Then finally, when I think of the office of the prophet, you know, there are all these prophets in Christian ministry. We're talking Christian prophets, and a lot of them are well-meaning and do a great job. However, not many people know that Christ, the original organic prophet of all the prophets of the Christian ministry, you know, started the foundation, the apostle of the church, the chief work planter apostle, and the chief office prophet of all the others, all the rest of us are descended from that, his lineage, 
by grace. It says that Jesus Christ in Hebrews 1 9 had the oil of joy and gladness above his fellows. How many people think when they think of a prophet that's joyful? How many people think that Jesus actually was pretty merry and had a joyful heart? Not many. So we think of him, not the sweet baby Jesus only in the cradle, in the manger, but he grew up. He had to deal with warfare and life and people and stuff. Yet he was known, Hebrews 1, 9, Jesus was known from afar that people could see him stand with a group of people talking, group of his disciples, other people, and they'd say, man, what is it about that Messiah, that Middle Eastern Messiah? He's got the oil of joy. He's got joy. And the rest around him, they don't have that kind of joy. So years ago, 20 years ago, the Lord allowed me to discover that as a promise that if Jesus could have it, then I would like it too. So I started to ask God, Lord, I would like the oil of joy and gladness above my fellows too. Now, anybody can do that. Any saved person can do it. Any color person can do it, all right? There are a couple of qualifications, though, for that oil of joy and gladness. All right. One of it said Jesus hated iniquity and he loved righteousness. Therefore, God gave him the oil of joy and gladness above his fellows. So Jesus, the Messiah, hated the sin condition. He hated sin so much he didn't practice it. But he also he wasn't hating the sinner. He never looked down on anybody or put him down or disrespected him. But he hated the sin condition of how it could hurt so many people and addict people and torment them and cause a child abuse and all sorts of pain. He hated it. That's why he wanted to, he's willing to die on the cross, to give us his power and presence to pray, resist, be healed, all the amazing things in the book of Acts. And you have to learn about it. That's all. You just can learn about it. And also that the power over death, death without Jesus means you never get to go to heaven. You don't get to go. There's such a thing as the Lamb's Book of Life. Nobody talks about it. You can Google the Lamb's Book of Life. It says that everybody, every person around the globe who's ever been born has their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus' book to live forever. However, what happens is people along their life, long or short, choose whether they'll accept Jesus or not. And if they don't, then their name is erased out. That's all. So you want to keep your name in the book of life and tell people about it. So Jesus Christ had the oil of joy and gladness, and he hated iniquity, this power of sin. Therefore, he was willing to die, the Lamb of God, and sacrifice himself, shed his blood for us so that we wouldn't have to have fear of death, being scared all the time, because he came to overcome death and the sting of death. Death, where is thy victory? That's one of the famous phrases. Death, where is thy victory? Instead of having to be scared, I'm going to die. One day I'm going to die. Oh, no, paranoid. I may die. You know, something's going to kill me on news. It's going to kill me. It's going to kill us all. It will. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about it. If you know the Lord, you know where you're going to go. <laughs> and along the way, with his power knowledge, trust, proactive thinking, prayer, healing. You can avoid a lot of stuff and have victory and joy while you're here and avoid a lot of this suffering and pain. Minimize it. You always have something. There will always be conflict. But he will help you navigate it, overcome it. He'll help you forgive it and keep your joy. The other part about the Messiah in Hebrews 1, 9, he hated iniquity, not people. He wasn't sin conscious. He just didn't want anyone to be in pain. You know, when Lazarus died, 
Lazarus was his friend, and the two sisters, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, were his friends. So Jesus got the news that Lazarus had died. He'd up and died. And he still didn't feel the witness of the Holy Spirit saying, go over there to Lazarus' house yet. So he waited, and then when it was time, he went over to Lazarus' house, and there he was dead, and there were the sisters weeping and crying. And, you know, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he didn't say, oh, you overly emotional women. Oh, you time wasters. I mean, you know, you need to just suck it up because he it says in the bible and this is one of my dad who's a pastor he'd always say this verse the shortest verse in the bible jesus wept so jesus the man minister messiah knew probably supernaturally that it was going to be okay he was going to raise lazarus from the dead but he didn't talk down to the ladies his friends and say accuse them of being overly emotional or upset he wasn't that kind so he had empathy and compassion that's it he said he wept he hated what sin condition of death really death would do to people it tore you know he, was, he had empathy and compassion and emotion so back to the finishing up Hebrews 1 9, Jesus hated <clears throat> sin, the iniquity that we all fight and have. And he has the power to break that. Even emotional sin, connections, strongholds, all that. Also, it said Jesus, because he had the oil of joy and gladness above his fellows, you could pick him out in a crowd. He had so much joy on his countenance, an invisible, visible joy. It's because he loved what was righteous. Jesus loved what was righteous. He didn't love, he wasn't super spiritual. He wasn't holier than thou. He didn't quote every verse and let you have no comment. You know, no, he wasn't preachy. But he loved righteousness, the Holy Spirit, the holiness of God, with joy. He still had joy. He was lighthearted. He wasn't an ego. That's so amazing. So we just wanted to put in a little P.S. for joy. Last comment. It helps because the world is a pile on world. Pile on worry. Pile on fact. Pile on bills and ideas and future worries. Global warming. You name it. It's there. Your kids. Your family. How are you going to keep your joy and your peace unless you know the Lord, unless you know the secret? That's the inside thing we've just discussed. I would close with this. One of the things that is very key in my ministry is keeping my joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I also work out. <laughs> Try not to eat out, but I do. And um, <clears throat> we're always working on that. But the idea is we want to have some knowledge of how to get into this joy and keep it. And it's very stable because it's the Lord. So when we look at pile on and your tipping point, there is such a verse as this. Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. This is how we do it daily. This is how we do it, do it. Okay. You make a list like David. The Lord said to David, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. You've got big stuff coming after you, but you're going to have to let me handle it. So the secret of that, the meaning of that to me, is that every day, every couple of days, every time you feel it on you, that worry thing, you just make a list, sit with God, clear your mind, be with God quietly, and say, think of every care, every fear, every worry, every concern, every burden, and give them to the Lord. That way, you leave him with him. 
He has to fight him. You are not a worrier. Instead, you are a warrior of rest. You're not a worrier. You are a warrior of rest, God's rest. Because you're going to get revenge. You need to keep your revenge on the devil, the mean adversary, who wants to make you worry. That's all he does. By not getting worried, you give every care, worry, fear, tomorrow, what the news says about next week, the elections, next two years, whatever's going to happen, the big stuff, everything, and every day do that. If you, you're going to have peace. Instead, start to thank God for all the good stuff going on, all the stuff that didn't happen and that's good at your house, in your life. That's how I do then put on praise music, fellowship with nice people, get out of the house, do nice things, help other people every day until you realized you don't have to do it all the time every day. It just sort of comes that you've started to, you've gotten stronger in that. And so I find that I don't have to do it every day, but there are key seasons where lately I have done that. I realized, you know, I feel good, but something's bugging me. So I'll just park myself somewhere and I'll just be with God and think, now what is, am I letting a care back in? Those are like snares. Little bit here, a little bit there, pile on again. So I have to clear my mind and say, Lord, is there a fear I have? A worry? Do I feel like I'm carrying the burden? How I'm going to make it happen? How I'm going to make it happen? Oh, yeah, I was thinking it's my responsibility to do all this stuff. There is natural responsibility. But then there is other kind like this. You're just so conscious. You know, you're too much like that. So there is a natural balance to this. But the idea is you got to figure it out. Tailor make all of this for you. It's about you. This is my tips, helpful tips that make me feel joyful. But, and it's joyful, I've never had so much horrible trouble before coming up here. I never had so much horrible trouble before I came up here. But God made me more joyful instead. <laughs> more fear-free instead. More godly content, which is great gain instead. And I think, I'm troubling the devil, honey. I'm not troubling me. He may try to, they, you know, God can do it. If he can do it with this, what has happened in the last several years. You know, the Bible says, fear has torment. Fear has torment. When I've had the worst personality, you know, persons that do the worst stuff. It's really been human people, frankly. Human people. Relationship big deals. And so I had to just learn how to, you know, go to God more and also not let it be moved or put fear on me. So you say, wow, if that can be true, it's something money can't buy. People can't give you, only God can give you. And I want to say this the devil wants to keep you upset and me upset so we can't think, that we can't focus, we can't work, we can't enjoy our life. And you know what? That's just too bad. We're not going to do We're going to go back and listen to this tape three to five to six times, maybe a hundred times till you get it down. And you're going to be the same way. You do not have to be. Fear has torment. So remember, you can put that on your list. I'm watching the news and horrible, 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 horrible news comes on. And all of a sudden I go, <gasps> the tipping point. Oh, that's right. Fear has torment. I'm not going to take any thought for tomorrow. I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to be smart, but I'm not going to fear. Fear has torment. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Jesus had the oil of joy and gladness above his fellows. What more can we say? God bless you. He loves you. This is Tavo DRC signing off for now. God bless.